our special guest today, the Duke from Oakley, Dana Duke. Man, I've been friends with this guy for 42 years. So we're down here in Yucca Valley, California, visiting the legendary Duker from Oakley. So we're going to be doing a few uh, stories, I guess, with my dad and the Duker. Peace. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to it or say anything before we get started? Well, at the current time, I'm just short of just breaking out in uh, uh, just all this joy of just seeing, just seeing the world of BMX and freestyle now just bursting and coming alive, and and it just it just gives me you know it's, I, I'm I'm just within minutes of it's just like <clears throat> it's, holding back the tears is just hard enough just to see all of this response to hear about the day you know mm -hmm. it's just it's just heartfelt. You know, it's like uh, I I just can't believe it. How do you how do you go out and just thank each and every one that sent me a email or a friend request and yeah. Uh, and the only thing I really apologize for is just a lot of times I don't just have all the ability physically to respond or do all the all the all the stuff to to get the the, the get responses back to people and stuff. I think they're just happy to see you online, you know, and know that you're still kicking and doing I ain't thing. dead like this. <laughs> what is that Facebook crap about me being dead or something? No. I didn't hear about that. I don't know. Someone said, they said, no. Oh. But, uh. Well, yeah, when, when we started playing this trip, we told them we were going to stop here and see the Duker, and they all started just getting crazy about it, yeah. you know? They're saying we better see those suspenders, the Oakley glasses. And those tight shorts. Yeah. <laughs> the, grass, the red, white, and blue ones. <laughs> oh, get out of here, man. The shorts were cool. They were one off. And they even had the Oakley embroidered. It wasn't fucking stitched. It was, it was embroidered in the pant leg. Yeah. Dude, they were like this short right here. Right here. And, oh, okay. and then the suspenders I'm sorry. pulled them up even farther. Were well, your nuts ever hanging out? Oh, wow. Close. Oh, you, um, yeah, it was close, but maybe that's why I met. Maybe that's part of the of, deal. I had a lot of female friends. Yeah. Just, uh, acquaintances. Well, that's, that's probably one little item that I'll just stay off on the right hand side. <laughs> you know, I'll stay in the parking lane here. Uh, but I'm sure it dangled out a few times on a few of our adventures we've had together. <laughs> so many. Uh, but there's, can I say something? Oh, great. Say, say, you don't mind. Yeah. Well, um, so I want to. Exp I think I explained this to you guys, but on our first tour, um, Duke and I got together. It was you know Oakley BMX action and all that. Duke was announcing, but Duke was on the phone booking shows as we traveled. <laughs> so he was the first one that I saw book shows, and he just called up bike shops and said, "Hey, we're doing this show. Are you interested in coming? And, you know, having us come down and do these shows?" And uh, Halfway through the tour, it caught on like fire. But without Duke booking those shows, 
who knows what would have happened. You know, I mean, that was a key to the beginning of this whole situation. That was the very first tour you well, guys you, went on. You very guys, first you tour guys may on. have thought that was all genius, but I was just trying to figure out a way how I could stay out on tour longer. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if I get more shows, I got to stay out longer. There you go. Well, it wasn't it was the most so much organized fun. schedule. It was like, hey, we're in like uh, El Paso, Texas, and they, and they want us in Florida tomorrow. Uh, we, were we not there? And I, I said, no, you said no, right? Because that's like... That's oh. like we have to leave right now, sweaty, and not stop. He's like, yeah, I told him we'd be there. <laughs> and then it would be back to Texas. And then up to the East Coast. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Oh, Illinois. Illinois. Yeah, it's got to be up there in New Jersey. What do you think is one of your most memorable stops you guys made on a tour? Or, like, favorite town you guys hit? Paris. Well, you can't beat Paris at the Bear Sea and everything. Yeah. That was the ultimate experience, the crown super cross of all BMX freestyle. Yeah. That was it. I mean, in the largest not <clears throat> people don't understand, you know, like, oh Bear Sea, well I get it, I see a few pictures. No, you don't get the immenseness. Yeah. You know, just don't even even fathom the immenseness uh, of this event that happened. But uh, I'll share that another time. Okay. Uh, but, but uh, it was just that uh, that was one of them. But I think we had several uh, events where I think El Paso, Texas, rained as uh, over there, or or at the Big Texan. The Big that Texan. That was a good tour stop at that. Well, it was shop. good for him. Oh. Why? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> because can I tell it or not? Yeah, I can tell it. <laughs> this is very typical with Duke. Um, we. We'd be sitting at the Big Texan, which is a famous steakhouse, and um, believe it or not, <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I'm just sorry. I, I just, You've been I, talking all damn day. Oh, I'm <laughs> out of line. Anyways, so he's like, "Yeah, I'll be right back." And I'm like, "Well, what happened?" You know, Mike and I are sitting at the table like two little kids. We're just going, and he meets this girl. I mean, she's just this beautiful, really nice girl, right? <laughs> and he's got a date. It, was, it took like three minutes, you know. And it was, that was—I was just asking for help. <laughs> she was giving him directions. And anyways, that's were what, you actually lost though, Duke? <laughs> no. <laughs> but the idea was I was lost in trying to get her not phone number <laughs> and tried to find directions on how to get it. So you guys went yeah. on the merry-go-round, played at the park. You were good friends, right? Oh, yeah, very good. Yes. Platonic friends. Very platonic. It stayed all clean. 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 Because your, your dog is watching, right? That's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, uh, he made a lot of friends. <laughs> he made a lot of friends. Leave us back at the hotel. Never. Unresponsible. Never left alone. They're only... <laughs> Uh, several times where my my sanity absolutely requested maybe a little vacation for a few hours, but never more than that. We, we got a call one morning and we woke up and Duke was not there. <laughs> and there was a message on the phone and the hotel manager goes, um, Mr. Duke Kelso said he won't be coming back. Duke Kelso? Du uh, not Duke Kelso, um, Duke. Dana Duke. Dana Duke. Uh, yeah, I know him as Duke. So, uh, Mr. Dana Duke said he will not be returning to the tour. He just told me to tell you that. We're like, what? Yeah, we're like, I don't know, somewhere far from home, in a hotel, going, well, what do we do now? You know, he's got the schedule. He's our dad. He knows everything that's going on. What and, did uh, you guys do to earn that, though? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Yeah. Me? Yeah. You mean? And Duke's got a I mean, uh, Mike has a daughter too, so we gotta. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Just so we gotta. We'll I, tell you about that I, another yeah, time. No, but no, no, it's just another rough housing. Duke yeah, came back. House. He came back. We worked it out. Mike apologized. It was just boys being <laughs> boys, boys, right? Huh? <laughs> boys being boys. Boys being boys, but uh, Dad wasn't happy about it. <laughs> I got a good story um, about. Jeez. Well, this had to be 25, 30 years ago. I thought it was like 10 years ago, 30 years ago maybe. Duke called me up, said, hey, let's drive up the coast, go see your dad. I'm like, sure. So he comes, picks me up at like 
I don't know, 9 o'clock at night. Around midnight, we hit Pismo Beach, and so we're like, hey, let's go drive around on the beach. And so we're driving around, you know, just, he had a Bronco, four-wheel drive, and we're facing, looking at the ocean, and I said something like, man, if you were a real man, you'd drive straight into that ocean. He looked at me like, what? And I said, yep, if you had any balls at all, you'd drive this thing straight in that ocean. And he hit the gas, and we were floating. We went, we didn't go like two feet, we were like six feet and the truck was floating and he was trying to, as we turned around, <laughs> I way. had to roll my window up and a wave <laughs> broke over the car. <sighs> and he was just like trying to get us out of there and uh, finally the wheels started to touch a little bit and the waves were pushing us. And we got back in, opened the doors and water just poured out. Wow. Uh, the, the guy needed to try to get out the door. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, well, you, I, just the way you said it though. It was like, you know, you, just, you haven't got the balls, you know, you ain't gonna, you know, I said. That's all we had to say, man. <laughs> it was said, like fun. <laughs> I just said, are you, is your seatbelt on? <laughs> yeah. I know I can do this. I did see it in a cartoon once. Let's do it. And off we went, now I remember that. Mike, would, Mike Buff and I would be in the back seat and we'd think of something that we wanted him to do. And, uh, we, I mean, we were involved along for the ride, but, of course, he was responsible because he ran the car. <laughs> and he was the dad. I mean, Mike couldn't even drive. He had a permit, and I had just gotten my license. So Mike would start real low, and he'd start chanting Duke's name, going, Duke. <laughs> and then I would come in, and, and by the time we were peak, it was Duke, it was really loud, and we were chanting his name. His eyes were like, he's ready to do anything. And, uh, man... We had a lot of fun doing that stuff. Uh, oh, okay. So you can tell your story. I'll no, tell you how. No, I'll give it to you. Uh, now you go on this one because I got a gain of Okay, so I was here. 14 or 15. I just, I quit. I quit BMX, quit racing. I kept riding and jumping and stuff. But I quit racing when I was 13. And my dad asked me to go to a race that he was covering in Washington. <laughs> So we got there, and it was muddy and wet, wet and everything. And he goes, Washington like, State? Yeah. Yeah. Seattle, right? Yeah. Okay. Seattle, Washington. And um, he introduced me. He goes, oh, I want to introduce you to somebody. And Duke <laughs> came walking up in these really tight shorts and those suspenders. And I'm just like, whoa, man. And um, Were they coordinated, though? The suspenders? Well, yeah, you look the like the flag, but... Man, they were tight. Long hair? <laughs> no, he was a good-looking guy. <laughs> oh, God. He had his hair cut. I mean, he was a he was a good-looking guy, but he was 26. He's 10 years older than me. And I'm like, I'm like what? I don't want to hang out with guys that old. So Duke's like, hey, man, I'll give you a ride back to, we'll go out and get something to eat, and I'll give you a ride back. And I'm like, oh. I was trying to break the ice because I knew he was timid right off the bat. It was just like, Awkward, kind of like it. I, I think I busted a few jokes. And How I would you feel crack. if some guy came up in those sunglasses, suspenders, shorts jammed up his ass? What, what, how would you feel? I would feel like the eighties oh, were a different time. <laughs> Blast of the, oh my god! No, I think I would probably have gotten in a car and left. Was that the eighties, anyways? <laughs> it was. It was. He very, was not. He was in his own style, which proved to be. The, the thing was, is that Duke never cared. He didn't care. It was hey. like, no fear. Talk to any motocross star. Just walk up and talk to him. Me and Mike would be kind of hiding behind him. Like, you know. <laughs> so this is the first time you guys ever met, right? Uh, the motor, uh, anyway, so we're in Washington. And Duke said, hey, let's go get something to eat. So I'm like, okay. And uh, we just got along. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was good. Because uh, I think I just kept, kept trying to... To bust jokes with them, or just, or just, uh, uh, just, uh, I, I guess I, my deal was it was just like at that time working with Oakley, and I just saw this, this sport being evolved. I just kind of my mind just kind of just molded into the fourteen to fifteen year old mentality. <laughs> but I had the ability of I'm a thirty six year old man. Trying to no, go, 26. or twenty-six year old man. I don't think you molded though. I think it was kind of like 
It just happened. You were kind of a late bloomer, and that's why we got along. It was like, hey, man, this guy thinks just like me. (laughs) We're on the same wavelength. Well, we had virtually had the same personal hobbies. You were extremely sharp, but for somehow, for some reason, we just got along. And so you guys guys met, and then how did it evolve from there? Uh, I think it evolved because we became good friends. And then I was telling, I was working gym, and I go, hey, why don't you let me go down to some magazines, and I can show the grips and stuff, and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can, what I can do, maybe we'll get some pictures of the matters or whatever. So what I did, I called up on the phone, and I, and I, and I called uh, the magazine to see if I could set it up, and I guess the, who was the secretary, she's the secretary of uh, Val, Wizard, yeah, Brenda, Val, Brenda, Brenda Val, Brenda. one of them. She, they said, yeah, uh, he'll see you because he, Bob wanted uh, Oakley's advertising too. too. So uh, that was it. So that's what made the magic of that meeting happen. And you were there. I think you were running hot stickies at the time, <laughs> or just beginning it. You were still doing the test writing, but I think you had like a we were little sorry. back table set up in the back with a box of stickers. Yeah, I was sitting on a milk crate. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling the stickers out of my pockets and putting them in envelopes. No, so, no. Then, um, but then, well, what was Hot Stickies? Hot Stickies was my sticker company. I started when I was like, I don't know, twelve, <laughs> eleven or twelve. Yeah. You sell them at the races? Yes, I did very well. Oh, <laughs> he had lines. I remember that. I was just trying to take lessons on how to <laughs> <laughs> how to do that. And then the. The associations, like some will say, started seeing the line, right? And they're like going, hey man, this is our race, and he's making money. And uh, all of a sudden they started doing it, you know, and then I had to give him a percentage. But, you know, it's cool, they let me do it for a while. But, um, but somewhere along the lines, freestyle had started, and we were doing stuff, uh, local shows, and um, Darlene Lear had gotten us on some stuff on TV and um, then Duke wanted us to go down Duke wanted us to go down to Laguna Beach or wherever near Oakley and meet him and he said he wanted to ride bikes together and I'm like wow I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know you rode bikes I've never the seen boardwalk in Laguna Beach the boardwalk of all places well and, we never uh, got that far because uh, so Duke's doing this like, I, you know, we're like 15 and 16, and Duke's like, I guess he's probably schmoozing, like, hey, I'll, I'll show these guys I ride with them, and can I tell them this? Uh, yeah, you, and also this is the, the pre-Santa Fe incident, so I had all my skills and ability to right. ride a bike. Right, this is before he got hit by the train. <laughs> so I had all the ability to ride a bike, but? I mean, that's an amazing thing, he's even here, I, I mean... He didn't just like touch the train. He, well, we'll talk yeah, about that another yeah, time. Anyways, what was I talking? That's about? another rabbit hole to go down. Yeah. And it doesn't look well, good. We go down now. <laughs> we were talking about. Oh, so Duke says, "Hey, Mike and RL, come out. Let's go have lunch in Laguna Beach, and we'll ride." So we're like, "Okay." So he's got like this torker that's big or something, and we're on our bikes and. <laughs> He goes about five feet, hits a curb, and he's down, man. And I mean, <laughs> his arm is bloody, and his arm's all scraped up. Mike and I haven't even pedaled yet. I was trying to jump a curb. He doesn't know how to jump, though. So he just <laughs> he tried to bunny hop up a curb, jump a curb. So we're like, man, this is. So Mike I've, goes, all right, well, let's go a little bit farther. And well, I read your instructions in your magazine, and yeah, your, and I can do this. <laughs> And Duke just gets up like nothing, you know. He doesn't like get up, and he's like stiff. He just gets up and goes, "You guys ready? Let's go." <coughs> so we're like, we stay back about twenty feet this time. He goes another ten feet, hits something else, and I mean, it's like ass overhead, you know. Bikes <laughs> flipping, and we're just sitting there like going, "That's two crashes in like two minutes." And he's got accident on aisle nine. Got <laughs> blood coming down accident. his arms, hands are bleeding. Clean up on aisle nine. <laughs> he pops up, which was really weird. Let's go. Another five feet. This time we didn't even move. 
we were like 50 feet away from him, man. We, we didn't know what was going on. He crashes again, gets up, and he goes, you guys want to go eat? <laughs> and we're like, okay. So we go in this restaurant, and he's just, blood's just coming down everywhere. And he's like, so, Napkins. what are you guys doing? And we're like, looking at each other, going, I don't know. Speaking of Duke's crashes, tell him about yesterday at the skate park. <laughs> well, that was... I'm bummed I didn't get that footage. Oh, we were riding a I'm skate park. I'm glad you didn't get that footage. <laughs> it, it was it was a definite you know emergency on aisle nine on that one for sure. We're he uh, we're riding. Dylan and I were riding a skate park. What's it called? The D- <coughs> DHS. Yeah, Desert, Desert Hot Springs Skate Park. DHS Skate Park in Desert Hot Springs. Pretty cool. It's not big, but a lot of cool hips and stuff. But anyways. Uh, so I'm riding, and all of a sudden I look over, and Duke slammed up against the face, and fa- as his face slammed up against the fence, his wheelchair is folded in half, and he, he's laying on the ground, and Dylan's with him. I was doing a, I was doing a drop in, I was doing a drop in at the skate park. There was a bowl next to it, but there was like this. I wanted to get warmed up, so there's a flat ramp surface that had a pretty good incline onto it. I thought, hey, I could do this. Because it's straight and I can just, so I got on, but I forgot that the right <laughs> wheel brake was on. But, whoops, <coughs> I got going about 15 mile an hour and, and it just pulled to the right, slammed into the fence. Like, whoop. It was a full yard sale. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely a his, topsy-turvy event. I, well, his glasses, his phone, <laughs> and his keys and his wallet all went flying in different directions. My heart doesn't even doesn't even move. When I see Duke on the ground, it's like, I've seen that. I can't even count how many, hundreds of times I've seen him in bad positions. He always just pops right up. Pops I just right like up. watching all those guys that were riding bikes and skateboards. They were, they were looking at me wheeling in on the wheelchair. Just totally wild out. Just, just get, and then they asked, what do you get? They were just like, hey, I'm just going to drop in here now. I'll think about this ball. And they're going, what are you going to do? Drop in. What do you think? <laughs> so I tried to drop in on that ramp, and I ended up dropping in onto the fence. So Dylan pushes him back up to the top of this little runway, and at the end of this runway is a bowl that you really would go in, right? And Duke's sitting there going, I, I think I could do it. I think I can do this again. And I'm like, no, no, you're not doing that anymore. No way, man. And he's like, no, I think I could do it, man. He got, I got figured out. And I'm like, well, he's got his mind made up. Next thing you know, he's whipping down this hill. And he doesn't, at the bottom of the hill, I, I would thought he'd grab his wheels, turn, and stop, you know, but he just keeps going closer and closer to that bowl. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, this is it. This is going to be an ambulance, hospital, <laughs> the whole deal. And then right before the bowl, he just grabs one wheel, he does this little turn, and then I got to go get him, push him up the hill. And then he does it a third time, and by this time he's got it wired. And uh, So the bowl is next. So be aware, if we do another podcast, I'll drop in. Hell yeah. Did I'll you get a thrill in. out of that, though? Oh, man? man, that was the best time ever. Your adrenaline was pumping? Oh, it was <coughs> It was there. I mean, you you know, it was there. It was definitely... If I was in your wheelchair going down that hill, my adrenaline would be pumping. Oh, because I, that was not like something you just walk up and do, you know. Yeah. I mean, that was... Well, I did go to bed after the event at 4.30 in the afternoon, but who cares? That's adrenaline <laughs> spent. <laughs> Dude, that yes, was a big Still one. doing it, man. Yeah, that was a big... Uh, Remember we pushed job. you around that pump track in Berkeley? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. I got air. I got a... I'll have to send you the, the pick. Yeah. I got a little error, too. Really? At least a, at least a three quarter of an inch of air <laughs> off the tire That's from sick. the jump. Oh yeah. But we'd get in the berm and those little rattling wheels on the front. <laughs> one would be like up like this, <laughs> and the other one's trying to crab, and it was like pushing a block of cement, you know. <laughs> but he's like, "Come on, let's keep going." And it's, I'm pushing him around this track. But he, you know, it's funny. He got he got something out of it. It felt good to him oh, just could. to go over those little humps. That's all that matters. Now the cool thing is, is I've got the total team desire to create the ultimate, the ultimate chair for, just for doing things, you know. And and yeah, no, not basically for doing, maybe skate parks, but uh, bowls and stuff. But uh, just making a cool one where you can just uh, 
navigate stuff like that without having to die like I almost did on that fence. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you should check out Wheels. He rides, he does uh, Pastrana shows, Nitro Circus. Oh, yeah? He does the big gaps on, that they do that. If you come down the hill and hit that big gap and land, he does that in a wheelchair. Oh, Back man. Back flips. Have and you he, seen? I mean, he crashes, too, he, but he's good. You're talking about Nitro Circus? Yeah, and the guy, they call him Wheels because he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh, so he is actually handicapped. Oh, yeah, he's in Oh, a, wow. And he comes down that big hill and hits those gnarly jumps. I bet his wheels are That's not crazy. wobbling, though. No, I don't think <laughs> he's probably got a wheelchair. Upgraded wheelchair. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I've seen on their show where they just do that thing on that mega ramp, but it's like they just get the craziest things they can ride, like a toboggan down yeah. there, or like, you know, a bathtub or something. Yeah. And they just like clear it on those things. My wheelchair just has that sticker, don't remove from hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just use, okay, we're trying to figure out how long Luke and I have known each other. All right. Okay, I was 14 when I met you, and I'm 57 now. How many years is that? 14 to 57. 43. That works. 43. Well, I'm not a mathematician, but I'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's 43 years, yeah. 43 years. Yeah. I, that's the reason why I had to go to an adult training class to get out of high school, because mathematics wasn't my skill. <laughs> so what was that, 77? You well, met you met in 77? No, no, 79, I think. 79 or 78, right there. I don't go by the year. I go by my age oh. and how old I was when we met. And then I just add yep. in the correct number. Yep. Well, then that's, that's how works. long. 43? Something like 43 that. 43 years. That's wow. crazy. And, and it, there's not one second that doesn't seem like it was the first time or today. You know, whether it's the awkwardness or the... yeah. Constant ridicule that I get from Laura. <laughs> it's my job, man. Uh, Should I tell no, the seizure story? Oh yeah, please share that one because I and the only the reason why I, it doesn't we just we uh, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> you got Duke has no fear. It I mean no fear of anything. It just that'll make sense in a minute. But Duke and I about. Two, three years ago? On the 4th of July, we drove up to Tahoe for a <laughs> big mountain bike downhill race, and we heard there was jumps up there. In fact, we hit probably five jumps on the way, different places we did, a whole bunch of jumps. But we finally got to Tahoe. No, sorry, I gotta back up. The first night we were in a hotel, Duke seized five major seizures in one night. I spent the whole night on my edge of my bed going. <laughs> I'd walk over and I'm like, hey, are you okay, man? Duke, and I'm trying to move him and he's just locked in this seizure. And then it stops and he gets up. And he stands on the edge of his bed, walks to the bathroom, comes back and goes to sleep. Like nothing happened. <laughs> so four or five days into the trip, I'm, you know, I don't know if he's seasoned or not because <laughs> he does it so much. Get up from going to a restaurant, he'd get up, he'd get tremors and stuff, and <laughs> I'd be holding him, and everybody'd be looking at us, and he did not give a shit. Didn't care. <laughs> so he's like, "Hey, let's go out to the pool. They got a jacuzzi there," <laughs> and he wore socks. <laughs> My feet are not the best way. <laughs> so that's why I cover them up. <laughs> He shows up at the pool wearing socks, and they're like red and gray, you know, some weird looking sock, and shorts, no shirt, and uh, I'm in, there's like these women, a couple of children floating around, and I'm in the jacuzzi, and I can see him, and he starts to seize, right? <laughs> he's having a seizure, but he knows there's women watching him, so he's really trying to <laughs> keep cover it. it, you know? So he's having a seizure, he's in red and gray socks, long hair, and these women are just like, <laughs> and I thought, you know, I've, this is about the 50th seizure. I'm not going to be able to do anything. He's out of it. <laughs> and so I sat there in the jacuzzi, and I just watched this whole thing unfold and watched the people react. And then Duke comes out of it, and he just flies like normal again. <laughs> people are in the pool, like, going, just didn't know what to do with it, you know. It was a funny experience. I was just dying. I was sitting back in the pool, and, and the ladies were in front of me watching him. 
but a couple of cute ones came over and talked to me and asked me if I was all right. <laughs> so I had to play it a little hard. Well, I kind of a. Uh, well, yeah, I'm kind of fine. But if you <laughs> stayed, maybe I, you know. Hold this. My whole seizure stopped as soon as you just stood there and chatted with me. Yeah. Hold my hand. <laughs> maybe if you touch me, maybe <laughs> there could be maybe a healing. <laughs> Just don't take off my socks. <laughs> That's right, please. <laughs> you won't be able to stand it. I swear, my my feet look like uh, uh, elephant feet, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm terrible. But no, they're really bad off. They're they're toast. Anyway, and he does all the driving <laughs> on the whole trip, week and a half or whatever. He did all the driving because <laughs> he's always driven on our tours. That's just it. Duke drives. And uh, that's why we get we to our do shows whatever on we time. do in the back. <laughs> it's the only reason why we got to our shows on time. And I'd go, hey, you want me to drive? No. No, I got it. I know what I'm doing. All right. Hey, Nutty Buddies and Mountain Dew, we're on the road. <laughs> good we're to go. Cool. We're good to go, 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the... Hey, well, I guess one of the... I guess uh, you probably have to mix match and put this thing together, but... Uh, one of the best, two, I think, was that first drive from uh, Arizona to Florida, the back to El Paso, Texas. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and how many days? Uh, like no, so I did. Three. Oh, my it, God. It was, it was just a horrible, but they had to have it. You know, it's like, all right, well, let's do it. And then we stopped in Arizona, we stopped in Arizona did that show, and out to Florida... And then they come back to uh, uh, that uh, El Paso, the El Paso, Texas one. So Man. that was that was. Uh, and in the maps, the map would say one inch, you know, <laughs> is five hundred miles or something. So we would take a ruler and start. <laughs> Just like, man, that's like day. three thousand miles, dude. <laughs> well, we and get there three back. <laughs> I just told him, look, we'll get there. We'll get there in time in four hours. We'll all be 30 pounds lighter because we can't pull over and eat. <laughs> and we'll be pushing the car to the next gas station because I ain't stopping. <laughs> and we were so smelly from sitting in that. We would do a show <laughs> in 115 degrees weather in Arizona, sweating like stuck pigs. Get in the van. Uh, there's like three or four of us just, just bad. And we didn't get even get to rinse off, and so one, he said, when we get there, we'll take showers, and here's what we got. Duke would pull up into a, a big hotel, and you'd see a maid cleaning a room up there, and <laughs> Duke would walk up there and say, excuse me, are you cleaning that room? And she goes, yeah, and he goes, oh, we weren't checking out yet. <laughs> and she'd go, oh, I'm sorry. He goes, but I lost my key. She'd hand him a key, <laughs> and we're just like, no way. And we would go in there. Everybody would take a shower and then we'd sleep as long as we could before we got kicked out. We'd be swimming in the pool, having a good time, and we'd just pack up and leave. And we didn't get very much time. But, but it was only done out of necessity. And each and every time one of these stunts did occur or happen, they all happened where no injury. No one was hurt mentally, physically. <laughs> Wait, skip that second right. one, mentally. Oh. <laughs> but no one got hurt financially. Yeah. Even though the hotel <laughs> actually got cleaner because we cleaned it with our, our, our yeah, dirt. Our dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm just thinking that, you know, it wasn't like, hey, I got an idea. Let's be rambunctious youths and storm that hotel and see if we can sneak a shower in. Yeah. Oh, we didn't have any money. We didn't have any money. We no, that's money. right. That's right. We man. borrowed money to go to do that tour and oh. put our savings into it. And so we weren't about to spend, you know, 40 bucks or 30 bucks. Well, six bucks in Motel 6 back then for, uh, you know, half hour of sleep and a shower. Wow. That was heavy, man. Yeah. That was a lot of driving. But it kind of got it whipped us in shape for oh, what yeah. was to come, huh? And, you know, as long as, uh, you know, they had the Motley Crude cassette in, we're on the road and off. <laughs> Is that what you guys would listen to? We, we only had, I'm sorry, 
showing my age now. We had no. cassettes. No. What, what, what no, was remember? It? You don't remember the main one? Come on, that guy came out with one album. It was just. He never got Billy Squire. Squire. Billy Squire, yeah. Billy, Billy Squire. Squire. Check out his first album, Billy Squire, man. It was. Well, he's not from me. <laughs> Billy Squire's from Homeboy, Alabama, or something, isn't he? I, I don't but know. But he's great. Mm -hmm. I thought you were something. Billy Squire just had it. He just had it. Yeah. That was good. And we just played that thing over and over. <laughs> yeah. But um, well, I still listen to it today, boy. I still got it cranked. Now, but at least we have better uh, sound reproduction than that A track. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you one more, okay, one more story. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. And if you don't like it, just tell me to stop. <laughs> All right. Okay. So. Duke's nuts. He's, I mean, he's, he's safe, but you know, he travels to the beat of a different drum. <laughs> no fear. You know, he's like, so we go on this one. On our first tour, he starts hearing this music where these guys, I think, call it popping and locking, which is like, what do they call it nowadays? Break dancing. No, no, the guys that move their feet. Like, pop and lock. No. <laughs> That's what I thought it was, popping and locking. No. You know, that, there's that one guy, real skinny, just, anyways, their feet are floating all over the place. So he would be doing the worm with his arms, and <laughs> while he's driving, he'd have one outside the window, and he'd come back in, and then, so he goes, we're, he's leaving one night, he's leaving our hotel again, and we're like, where are you going? He goes, I'm going to go to this, uh, I found a club that plays Midnight Star. And I'm like, oh my God, how does he do this? I Man, I can't even believe he comes home alive. So he's like, come with us. And so he sneaks us in the back and my hand is his bar. And um, we go sit down and he goes to the... Um, Responsibly snuck him in. <laughs> yeah, it was an honest sneak. And he goes, he pays the guy 10 bucks or something. And he says, hey, play, play Midnight Star, because that was a big song everybody danced to, right? Okay. Pop and lock. And there's, there's people on the dance floor, right? And he goes out there in the middle center of that thing and starts doing all this and the popping and locking and pushing his face. <laughs> and Mike and I were on the floor, man. We were so embarrassed. We were like, oh my God, how does he do that? And then he, and he does it like, he's not embarrassed at all. He comes walking, all right, hey, you guys ready to go? I'm about done. <laughs> And Mike and I are huddled underneath our chairs going, oh, no. <laughs> but that was interesting, right? Remember all that dancing you were doing? I was just trying to teach you guys that the very worst thing they could have done is said, leave. <laughs> and we could have done that and gone to McDonald's. <laughs> he would be up, go up to these guys that would have a blanket on the floor that were really good. You know, he's like, hey, man, what's going on? And he's like, and Duke would start doing his stuff. You know, well, they're really good. And we're just like, holy crap. Uh, I'm sorry I had to suffer through some of those irresponsible decisions <laughs> I made of popping and rocking in public. Because <laughs> I couldn't even do it, especially after the accident. It was like, it was just like a dyslexic island on the loose, you know. It just like, <laughs> I tried to lock and pop, I couldn't do it. <laughs> or we'd be, we went to, we went to Unidil Outdoor Motocross USGP, which is really cool so we got to meet a lot of these supercross that's where you met Mickey Ricky Johnson I think didn't you or, or close to it but that's where I, I try to bust in on the story but when I when I did, took Buff and RL to go see him supercross I introduced him to Ricky Johnson and Ricky Johnson's like whoa you are a lot yeah oh, yeah and, the, and then like Ricky Johnson was just talking to him, like, you know, the, because he was so impressed. Really? Yeah. Wow. They he were, was telling me how to do it. He goes, I got an idea for a trick. Really? And I'm like, I'm staring at him because he's like a Supercross champion, right? Yeah. And Scott uh, Ward winning the 250 Outdoor, 250 Supercross, AMA champion. You know, just this god on wheels. Yeah. yeah. And then he's just like, can I have your autograph for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember signing his autograph, but I remember staring at him going, and my brain was blank. I'm like, I just, my brain was just going, is is that Ricky Johnson talking to me? <laughs> oh, yeah, so we're kind of getting off it, but um, I, I sat with, well, I was standing on the sidelines 
we were on the floor um, in Bercy or Paris, France. The Bercy Bercy was a building, and I'm standing next to David Bailey, and David Bailey is watching o Johnny O'Mara and Ricky Johnson warm up, and he's telling me he's talking to me, right? This is David Bailey. I don't know. It's Super Two. cross jam in Honda. Oh God, he was just unreal, right? And um, he's telling me, man, Johnny and Ricky look so good. Ugh. I don't know how I'm gonna even compete with those guys. They're so good. And I'm like, I'm, I mean, I couldn't even believe he was talking to me, but it was cool. We sat there and talked, <laughs> watched the races, and that was uh, I will never forget that. But um, so here we'd be at Anaheim, right? Sold out. Supercross championship main event, all the biggest stars on the line, <laughs> and the uh, there's you know the gate drops backwards or back then it was forwards, you know there's a girl out there doing three seconds or thirty seconds or something like that, and then there's Duke <laughs> on the starting line, right? I mean we're five seconds from starting and he's like polish, polishing Johnny O'Mara's goggles, putting new goggles on him. New goggles on Rick. And I didn't have a pass. <laughs> Mark Barnett <laughs> putting new goggles on him. Getting, so they have clean goggles with tear offs for every single race. And Duke, moto. nobody would complain. There was no officials that came down. They just <laughs> let him. Duke would walk off and they would start the race. It was that close. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was kind of funny because I didn't have a pass, but I just had the suspenders. <laughs> the authority of the suspenders came in. I just walked up. And they always ask me, where are you going? And I went, it looks like I'm going down on the track. <laughs> and I'd take care of Johnny Omar if you don't mind. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> and I guess I just molded because it happened in the, all of the, uh, the, super, the AMA uh, Outdoor Nationals, every one I go to. Uh -huh. I'd, I'd convince the first guy in the first rep, and I'd be at every race, so it would just be like, oh, he, I guess he's supposed to be here. Yeah. I said, you're damn right. <laughs> and I'd say, yeah, you're damn right, I'm supposed to be here. And he'd walk up to him like, just like he'd walk up to you. Yeah. You know, and Mike and I had been racing motorcycles for a long time, been in motorcycles for a long time, so we knew who Jeff Ward was, Ricky Johnson, all these guys, and we they were our heroes, you know what I mean? We looked up to them. And Duke's like just having a casual conversation with him, no big deal, you know. And uh, but we got to meet a lot of a lot of guys. Like That's that. cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Cool this is Kitte. This is Kitte. AKA Kit. Coco. K I T T <laughs> and then Tay, T A Y. Hold on to her. Well, I don't want to be forced, but well, show her face to the camera. There. Oh. There's Kitte, the one and only Kitte. <laughs> so Duke and I talk every morning. He's on his laptop, on on mine, or on FaceTime, or wherever that stuff is. And all I see is fur. <laughs> the cat just paces in front. I think she knows Duke's talking to somebody. And then Duke pushes her, and she turns around, <laughs> and let her see her face. And then her, just a big pile of fur. She's a cool kitty, though. Well, I know we're hoping to well, get Buff involved with uh, you two as well, to do something like this again with that all three would, of you. That is storms, my... Really that, oh. I, and again, I, I, I don't mean to be repetitious, but it's just like this heart-filled moment of happiness just to be involved in a, in a podcast with you guys and, uh, and just to have that. Uh, and just think of Mike Buff, R.L. Osborne, and the Duker all together at the same time. Never once has it happened, probably in 40 years, all three of us together at one time. In one sitting. Wow. When I saw Buff the other day, that was the first time in 35 or 40 years we figured, right? Yeah, 40 almost. Yeah, yeah 40 years I haven't seen him. Yeah. Or even talked to him. I, he, t he called me one time when that book was being done. Uh huh. That was, and we talked a couple times and that was it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're getting back and, into it. And now. it seems like it was like. It was this like, hey, where's the orange pumpkin van? Let's get in. We're late for a show. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what it was. It was like, no difference. Not not even a beat of voice patter or anything. It was just like, uh, wow, I guess I woke up from a long nap. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of time passed. It's but, cool, uh, though, that everyone's reconnecting, talking, and getting back together. Yeah, Duke and I didn't talk for 
15 years? Yeah, it's got to be that because I was I was so involved with my uh, uh, my my bodybuilding because I was competing and uh, in England and uh, competing uh, in France and uh, you were what was your peak? You were two twenty at like eight percent body fat. No, I was down. I got down to my final show at five five wow. percent body fat at, at two twenty two fifteen. Wow, Jesus. 215. Yeah, How tall are you? Uh, 5'11. Shit. That's pretty good, huh? That's I mean, really I, good. you know, I say, oh, I'm 6 feet. Uh, fuck you. You're 5'11. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little grunt. <laughs> uh, like, you're 6 feet? Oh, yeah. And your shoes? <laughs> 6 feet as well? Yeah. But, uh, no, but that was. You've lived many lives. Yes. Many lives. If you know somebody that's like lived, like you're like, man, that, that's one hell of a life. Well, I, I would say a Duke's probably lived a hundred of those <laughs> life. I've been very fortunate and blessed to have uh, an array of uh, lifetime experiences. And uh, I know over our ability to have our friendship grow and to this day, even grow stronger than it was the day we met. It's just like it keeps going. It can only get better. Yeah. More stories to tell. You've designed two good products since we've been here. With you. But honestly, he's two good products for Dylan and I were going, man, that's a good idea. Really good idea. <laughs> well, that, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the neat things that, uh, with, I guess, more the inability. Of, uh, and, and I'm just chatting with all you guys out there that may have a little disabilities and unable to move quite as fast as you used to, aren't able to pedal like you used to or whatever. It, 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 uh, it you just find that uh, it's not what you used to be able to do, it's what are you going to be able to do. That's the kick. What am I going to be able to do? Or what am I going to be I'm going to try to do, and if I can't do it, I'm going to option it out to where it will eventually go my way. That's my process. Well, well, to go from a train accident where it wasn't like he got out and had a few scratches, I mean, he <laughs> flatlined on the helicopter, right? He flatlined. He was, I saw him in the hospital, man. He was broken, everything. He you was better hope for that. That's, no, that's as far as I'm going to go, but wait, now you interrupted me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, huh? I'm sorry. I was talking about your... Uh, oh. So, oh, so anyways, can uh, I, I'm, you already said the bodybuilding yeah. thing, so... You know, imagine, you know, you're underneath the train, and, and you go from that to a bodybuilder <laughs> that's winning contests. At, and you were at like 50, 55 years old or something... Winning contests, I mean, in unbelievable shape. Um, doing advertisements, modeling. My last show was uh, 2017, so I was wow. 63. 63. 63. And I won, uh, I won that one. Hey. And you even had a couple seizures while you were on stage. I did. <laughs> Was that the one yeah. Cheyenne was with? Yeah, you? yeah, I remember. And she that. had to hold me up. I remember, I remember that. <laughs> she, and like, she didn't shake. She's just like him, fearless. She just she held on to him. All she cared about was her dad keeping him straight. She didn't like. Oh God, this is embarrassing. No. I mean, people all through the whole building, right? And she hung right in there with him and just rode it out and kept him standing up and took care of him. You want to know what the best thing of the whole adventure of this is? You have to understand that this is an event at the Agua Caliente Casino in Palm Springs uh -huh. in the showroom. It is filled to capacity, probably holds what, 1,500, 1,200 people, maybe. Uh -huh. You know, just an amphitheater. It's indoors, but it's just circular, you know, and then it's all facing in an orchestral, you know, type of deal. Right. And, uh, to, to be on stage, and you know it's your final because you just remember I broke my ankle when I came up to see you. So I was, <laughs> three weeks before the show, broke an ankle. Three broke weeks before the show, oh, I about I, you'll have to edit really well. You're gonna have to use Photoshop for sure. But I'm just sharing. With You're you. not gonna take off your socks, are you? No, I won't do that. 
No, but I were all we were talking about. I forgot. <laughs> well, well, you broke the field and tell your daughter. Oh, yeah. that, that's what I was going to tell you. That's a, that, uh, thank you, I'm sorry. But uh, if I don't, I'll forget it, and then all of you are going to be sitting there going, what is he going to say? Uh, <clears throat> what I was going to say is, the ultimate of this whole thing at 2017, I think I had like gone through with a broken ankle three weeks before the show. I had a heart attack uh, uh, three months before the show. Wow. And uh, A heart attack. <laughs> Three months before a bodybuilding show, yeah. seasoning, and he still did. But I had too much time involved in training, so I yeah. didn't want to blow it. Yeah. So uh, uh, anyway, so we got, uh, and 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 I knew this was going to be my final show, and I got to share this moment, what I did for twenty years, learning about bodybuilding and doing all this stuff. It was my career. Just like announcing for RL. So it's that same intensity of no one's going to hurt the trick team because you got to go through Duker. I'm on that stage and I'm with my daughter and I get to share this glorious experience. My highest accolade in the profession I chose. Bodybuilding or fitness or whatever you call it. And I showed my final peak Ever performance ever with my daughter. Yeah. My daughter. She got to be part of that whole pro she and Are I, you gonna that, try? I think shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that that out of out of anything that you want to do, you think about a profession, you know, people think, well, I pass this on to you or whatever. It's just like at my glorious moment, I knew I would never do it another show again. And I shared that moment with my daughter. Yeah. And just think of the peak, the highest peak of my uh, attainment of all the work I did at Pyramids of Power Fitness Studios of mine and training people and years of training, all the suffering going through building your body and exercising and working out and eating nutrition <laughs> and then at that peak of that oh, thinking all that stuff is just washed away and tears streaming down my face on stage yeah the whole audience was crying yeah everybody in the audience knew what was happening I saw the video I watched yeah, the video yeah. but you gotta you gotta really understand Cheyenne I mean she pushed him out in a wheelchair. Yeah. Who rolls out into a contest? I have a lot of respect for Duke for doing that. And anyways, when we were on our thing in Tahoe, it was Duke and I. And I'm pushing him every time we got around. You okay? Yeah. Every time we'd move around, I got his wheelchair, hooked him up, pushed him around. I was taking care of him. That yeah. was my job. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. And then um, Cheyenne and Kevin, Kevin's Cheyenne's boyfriend. So... They met us in Tahoe, and I've never met Cheyenne. Right? <laughs> and she walks in, and and Duke introduces. She's like, "Hi," and then took my hands off the wheelchair <laughs> and took the wheelchair. And I did not touch that wheelchair, pull a chair out for Duke or anything until she left. Yeah, I um, mean, she watches. Even when we were at the book signing. She's like, "No, I got it." Yeah, yeah. You are going to push her to the car? No. She goes, "I good." Yeah. 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 I'm like, man, it's kind of my job. And I'm like, well, you're a daughter, you're his daughter, so I guess. Yeah. <laughs> she had her own technique on driving, which I totally disagreed with. <laughs> She'd back into an elevator. I'm like, what are you doing? But she, yeah, she came in, and as soon as she showed up, because we had Dylan, <laughs> Cody, Jenna, Duke, Kevin, Cheyenne. I can't believe I remember that. Name. Cody wasn't there, but Jesse was there. Jesse was there, and she walked right in, and just you could just tell she's. It was like clear. She didn't have to say anything. It's my dad. I will be taking care of him as long as I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, because I'm sorry, but if you really want to feel the impact, if some way I can do it, because. Uh, Linda, Cheyenne's mother, videoed the event. Yeah. That final show. Oh, 
and I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll think about it, but I'll see if there's some way maybe in the future I can maybe... Because I would want all the guys that... that uh, just to share with you, BMX and freestyle has been my life. That's what started me on my career to to find out what's real in life. And BMX and freestyle brought that to me and I'll never turn my back on it. I will only help it grow and never quit till I die. So that's that's what I want to say. And uh, uh, I forgot, but uh, 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 Are you gonna let us show that video? Is that what you're saying? Well, maybe. Yeah. That's yeah, a cool yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I just think because I would want uh, for the passion that I know that some of you guys out there, I know you, some of you guys out there when you get on your bike, you know, you, this is real, you know, this is real uh, for you, and and I'm just, and you'll get it when you feel the emotion and you see that uh, if you're, and I, and that's why I would share it with people like you because you know that 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 deep that deep inner feeling of, wow, that's real. Yeah. That's real. I'm sorry yeah, that's, to with them. But this video is, is uh, that and there's so, it's so many lessons in it and uh, it's, it's just got so much in it and a lot of passion and it's a good video. Anyway, Hopefully you'll have to show it. It just, it, it, I just wanted to, that was just one part of my life that also RL, Mike Buff, Dylan, it all had a part in, in the creation because had I not been involved in freestyle and BMX, I would have never met Cheyenne. I would have never been involved with them. I probably wouldn't, and not because I, not because they weren't at a race or an event or where I was doing something, no. It was just that way of life. Just had I not been placed in the BMX freestyle world, I wouldn't. I probably would have turned out to really be an an advantage taker and probably not as uh, humble or not humble, but I mean, uh, not as uh, whole. Yeah. You know, not fake. Yeah. Just, I mean, I, I, and I don't mean that. I just mean just. I just feel pure. This whole and within this world of people in the BMX and freestyle world, they've never, you know, I've never been done wrong. Yeah. Sure, there's occasions because, you know, there's just no way of having a perfect world. All we try to do is just learn how to cope with it, deal with it, and not let it bother you. Yeah. That's good. The lesson's over. I like the word you said. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you and Dylan are tight. You guys have been tight for a while now. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it took... I was uh, on the leading edge of inviting you to take Jen out so I could watch him and Cody. <laughs> yeah, he used, to, he used to babysit Dylan and Cody when they were little Duke lived together with us for a while. I did have a car, so, so I, I, I always, because we would clean carpets every day, and, uh, and I just remember, and I, or I'll never go out, I said, you and Jenna go out. I wanted to hang with Cody and Dylan. <laughs> and so uh, then we had romper room time, man. I remember you left the door locked. Bye. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Jenna was like, I'm not sure. I'm like, he's, they're going to be fine, man. He's got it. He's, he's good. At, no, no, no worry about it. Yeah, they got back and they were unconscious because they had lack of oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were just thrashed and running around. <laughs> I marched you guys around because I knew the more marching around I got you guys to do it run outside, the earlier you go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Wear them out. Smart. <laughs> it worked. It was good. Uh, anything funny. you want to add in, Dale? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely have a lot of memories of Duke, especially <laughs> as... Uh, I don't know how old I was when you lived with us, but I do have memories of that. Those would be my first memories. I, I was he in first grade, probably, or because Dylan was like really. He must have been like fourish, fourish, four five, yeah. four and yeah. five, yeah. yeah. So Cody was two. Yeah. 
Because I, I got you guys to talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were like chatty Cathy's, both of you. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I remember you living with us. I remember the pirate ship you lived on for a while. <laughs> um, and then it was probably like, I guess, the 15 year period you were talking about from when we moved to LA up north before I'd seen you again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, once we saw you again, it wasn't like there was any time had passed, you know, it was yeah. like just like old times, basically. It was really cool. And I mean, you've come up to our house probably like five times now yeah so we always kick it hang out you know <laughs> we've been on a few trips as well road trips yeah and more coming yep which are that's what's kind of fun about this whole thing is it's only going to grow yeah and the only thing that needs to be is that just the care and the respect of others and if everyone doesn't try to take advantage of something that's going to grow big and just enjoy it all together yeah and not not have that and everything yeah that's just a, my hope and prayer because the sport will be back yeah harder than it and now it's it's basically popular now and just as professional but i just think it's just going to do this this 10-year flip into the hyper action that we had back in the 80s yeah that's my call but you know what <laughs> one thing i wanted to say too that was like since we've hung out, you know, I hear a lot of stories from you and you tell me all about the BMX days and stuff, which is really cool, but there's also a ton of stuff that you did before that as well as after to now. So I'm hearing all those stories is really cool as well because as big as BMX was for you, there, that was just like a small a part <laughs> of like everything you've done, you know? So that was Yeah, real, man, you're, you are the promoter of promoters. Yeah. For sure. But anyway, I was going to say that we're, you know, I don't know why everybody is in a hurry to get everything built up so fast. It's yeah. like, um, I just hope, you know, I just hope this, if, if it grows, it grows. Um, people enjoy it, you know, as it goes. But um, I just, I don't want to go through that phase where, where everybody comes in and you, they're just money hungry and they just want to or it becomes a job yeah they yeah. just want to make money and get out go on to the next phase you know i mean hopefully uh well it's pretty cool as it is you know i mean dylan and i've been well you and i did it yep. traveled around dylan and i are doing it and um we're having a great time and the just the riding community is really cool every yeah. i always say this but every time we go to a spot we make we make friends with whoever's there it's never yeah. it's never like weird feelings or you know like people like oh like this is locals only or whatever none yeah, of that stuff it's not it's, tribal at all yeah yeah no, it's no, always it's just like all. hey what's up what's what kind of bike is that you know and then it's like we end up almost talking more with yeah. the local people than we do riding sometimes i like that one kid you both you guys are talking to this kid is like he's a total kid rocker <laughs> he, he actually could jump his bike yeah you know? he was doing pretty good in that skate park and he rolls up because he's the RL big, big Mike Buff fat bike, yeah. fucking monster bike yeah. with pegs on it and stuff. And uh, and uh, he goes, man, that's a cool bike. And he walks up and he's got a fifth of Jack Daniels, <laughs> and it's uh, three quarters of the way done. There's only a quarter left of the mile. And he's going, wow, what is that? Hey, and he was calling out the parts. Yeah. And he, he drank a half a bottle. He's calling, <laughs> and then no, he went no, rogue. he's calling out the brand names. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. And and he's just sucking on this uh, fifth and half. It is about. I remember we were riding that park in Yucca and the uh, skate park there, and when they started riding, I swear, like fifty people showed up. Yeah, all of a sudden, fifty people are just watching and and then they're all trying to compete with them. I was like watching them they're just competing. Oh competing with the kid, not me. Yeah. Not me. Oh you were pulling out some shit. I got my, yeah. the only thing that I pulled out that was halfway interesting was I got the fat quad over a spine. And it was concrete not a concrete spine. A concrete spine, but it was not like what the pros ride. It was mellow. You know, about six, seven feet high. Looks <laughs> scary to me, man. But man, getting that big bike over that, I was like, "What's gonna happen?" <laughs> and that kid was doing it too after that bottle of crack. <laughs> they yeah, but he, so he, like smooth. They just move like a. It's like they just make their own transition. It's oh, he had. He just rode the. Yeah, he was riding on the. He did that double spine, 
or that mm -hmm. big jump, you know, the double jump, he's trying to get over and crossing up. Yeah. Oh, he did the titanic testicle ride of life. <laughs> he came down and blew that out, boy. <laughs> oh, he came down and he got off his bike and walked it off with that bottle. <laughs> And, and you know how he was very talkative? He was like very chatty. He was like G.I. Joe pulling the string out of his neck, talking yeah. about all the parts of the bike and everything. Uh. And then he did that nutcracker sweet. <laughs> he got off his bike and just walked. <laughs> I miss one that. of those moments. He, but you know what? He was pretty good. Right? He was a good. Rider. He was a good rider. He really say. had that motion with the bike. He had had that thing down. And yeah. the bottle of fifth at the same time. <laughs> That's probably why he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> no fear. God. Mm, that was so cool. Well, I'm just bummed that we didn't get a chance. I could. We. Well, I'll keep that little writing area a secret. I won't tell about the. No. No, we can't do that. Sorry. What if, if I said <laughs> I'm hungry and tired? Yes. What would your response be? Where are you going? Because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't helping. <laughs> do you have a last thing you want to say? Because well, I'm thing? hungry and tired. Are you hungry and tired? I'm yeah. hungry. Oh, what time is it? Who knows? Oh, yeah. It's Pat. Oh, it's. Riding up on 6.30, you're right. <laughs> Is it really? No, it's 8 o'clock. I mean, 8 o'clock? Eight. Yeah. yeah. It's going up on 8. I should have been in bed a half hour ago. Well, now you know what Freestyle no. BMX does to us. It's us in bed <laughs> by you guys want to uh, wrap it up, say goodbye to him or whatever? Goodbye. All right. Yeah, you go. And again, as, uh, as uh, I just wanted to thank being a part of each and every one of your guys' lives, uh, and just the immenseness of the emotions that I feel in my heart every time uh, RL sends me up and goes, "Hey man, you better look at this web page because they're 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 writing about you." Shit. I just go, "Why? What, do I owe money or it's what? Too, so How much do I owe?" He's so humble. <laughs> but it's it, it, but it's just I just I, yeah I'm talking to you guys. That, may have a few more difficulties doing things, but my heart's there out of with each and every one of you that's ever written me or asked, said, you know, man, hey, uh, but there's going to be more, I, I, I know this, uh, I'm coming back. There it is. That's it. That's there it is. is. I'm coming back. Good. And I'm going to say that, I'm going to speak for Dylan and I, and I'm going to say that we really dig this whole thing that's you know what I mean? I don't know what you call it, but the communication, the sharing stories, uh, what you guys are doing, posting your bikes, and this whole feeling that goes back and forth between everybody that we're in communication with, uh, we're just really digging. Yeah. And um, I'm having a good time. It's, yeah. It, it's fucking real. It's not like this. You know, we yeah you know, we may have football. You know, you know, it's just it's just real, and that's what I. Hey, it touches my heart, man. Is this real? Yeah. That's what I yeah. The most. It's not like you're here for the money or you're trying to progress or trying to move anything. It's just kind of, it's just, uh, it's just people doing what they love. Yep. You know? Yep. It's not a job. No. You know, it's just like I'm doing my passion. Yeah. What is your passion? It's not my job. I, I go, what's your job? And I go, no, it's not, it's not that. You ask me, what's my passion? Yeah. I'll tell you what my passion is. And that's my work. Yep. All uh, right, anyways, guys, um, thanks for joining us and uh, <laughs> coming to see the Duker and uh, Dylan Osborne, my son. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good night. Hey, good peace. Day. Thanks Out. for watching.